Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We last left off on the Evan Rude 35 horse that I've got right here. We had to order a few parts. The parts are here. I've got some new fuel line. We're gonna new, we still got the gasket to put on the fuel pump. I bought a brand new prop. I bought two props. I bought a 15 pitch and I bought a 13 pitch. A 15 pitch was what was on it. Now you guys might have asked me, uh, why'd you buy a new prop? Well, the other one had a big old whammo on it. It was bent over pretty bad. There was no resurrecting that. I'm sure I could send it to some place to get fixed, but these from Solus are anywhere from $72 to $79. Uh, aluminum props, kind of hard to beat. Uh, sending with shipping and everything back and forth to a prop repair place and the cost of repairing, you'd have almost the exact same amount of money. And this was brandy new. So, uh, and some people have told me, I, I read your comments, you guys are doing great at leaving comments and helping me along with this stuff, that I saw one guy had an 11 pitch prop on his 35 horse and it scoots his bo boat along really good. Another person said theirs had a 13 pitch on it and it did really good. I'm kind of worried that the 15 pitch might be a little too much prop for this uh, outboard. Now, if, for those of you that don't, under, that don't understand pitch, 15 inch pitch means if this was going through like jello, and it was able to advance without any slip as you rotate it. It would advance 15 inches per rotation. A 13 pitch prop would advance 13 inches per rotation. Uh, the one thing that, that aluminum will do, it has something they call slip. And slip is when the prop, you know, flexes under a load. I mean, you guys, you, you grab this, you go, how can that possibly bend? It will flex, believe it or not. And, uh, these aluminum props can have up to 25% slip, they call it, or loss of efficiency, where a stainless prop will only have about 10. So 10 to 15, I think is what it is, if I'm remembering correctly. You guys can leave comments uh, that know more about props than I do. I only know what I've read, studied, and experienced. That's enough for me. So anyway... I'm going to start off with the 15 pitch when I get it out on the water and I'll have a whole separate video probably on the 15 versus the 13 pitch prop on this particular outboard on the banana boat and how it performs. You can't factor in all the factors that come in and go, this is the prop you need and you don't need any other one because there's also four blade props out there as well. They all have their different purposes. Uh, my boat, uh, the, the banana boat weighs, I think it comes in tra trailer and boat all together is right around a thousand pounds. So minus a trailer, it's probably an 800 pound boat. So it's not that light. Then you put another 500 to 600 pounds of beefcake on there. And the 15 pitch prop might not have enough low end. It's like low gearing. When you go to a 15 to a 13, it's like shifting it down, shifting from fourth to third. You get a little more grunt out of the, uh, 13 pitch, but you won't have as much top end as the 15 pitch. Now, the 15 pitch may never have enough top end if you don't have enough motor to spin it up to the RPM and get it up on plane. So, anyway, those are all the factors that weigh in. So, anyway, cool. Got a new prop. We're going to grease the spline, bolt this thing back on. Boom, that's done. And then we're going to get back into, I'm going to show you some stuff on the spark plugs. We're going to get the spark plugs in. We're going to put new fuel line on. We're going to put the new fuel pump back on. No, the, it's a new to me, but uh, it looks like a brand new fuel pump. Uh, it takes 5 16 cents fuel line. We're going to put the fuel pump uh, on with a new line. And uh, I think I'm ready to dunk it in the water in my test tank and see if she'll fire and see if she'll uh, run and do everything we hope, all our hopes and dreams, hopes it'll do. And if it does all that fun stuff, we're going to be real close to putting it on the water. The only thing stopping me from putting it on the water today is the weather, if this thing's running, because the weather outside has been rain, stopped for a couple hours, then rain, and I'm not going to get the boat all out wet, soaking wet, just to go test run it. I'm older, and I'm a fair weather fisherman now, and I'm a fair weather boater. It's like when I used to motorcycle. I motorcycled for so many years uh, with the old Harley, and I said, I will never leave in the rain. I will get caught in the rain, but I will never leave in the rain. No need to. Nothing is that urgent that tells me I gotta go get wet for no reason. So, that being said, 
Let's take a look at what I'm doing here, and then we'll move up to the top end and get this video underway. Not to mention, I got me some uh, beef sticks with cheese from a local, uh, what do they call it, butcher? And these things are delicious, so this is gonna keep me going and keep this project focused laser sharp. The other thing I'm doing is my camera that I've been using, I have it on autofocus or not autofocus. I'm gonna try to do my best to not use the autofocus because the autofocus I notice is like fuzz clear, fuzz clear, and I hate that, it drives me nuts. But I notice that I can use the manual focus, especially if I'm a certain within a certain range and all the video looks really clear and clean. So I'm gonna to try to do that going forward. I love the way this little, uh, the sound is working on here. It uh, is absolutely excellent for uh, good, good clear sound and eliminating background noise. So I hope you guys have been enjoying that. I've been enjoying editing it more because I hear all those other things through my headphones and it drives me absolutely nuts to hear it. I go back and listen to my old videos out here and it sounded like I was in an echoey building, you know, so. But we keep learning. I keep learning on these. I keep learning on the audio and video. And we'll keep going. All right, let's jump in. All right, first things first. The reason we pull the prop off on every outboard I do before I even stunk it back in the water is there's a washer here that goes up against a taper typically. Some of them only have a, a cross pin that drives it. This one has a spline drive, obviously. But you want to make sure there's no fishing line wrapped around here because you can see a fishing line got behind this washer right here and wrapped around there, that fishing line would just sit there and eat that rubber's lunch. You don't want that to happen. So, now that I know it's clean, we're gonna go ahead and smear some of this uh, marine grease here. And you guys, it's Lucas Marine Grease is what I'm using. There'll be a link to the description below, or in the description below, so you can go get your own marine grease and do it the way I'm doing it. These are the small tubes. Uh, just because I got my small grease gun for the marine applications. That's why I buy it in the small tubes. All right, greased up. Let's slide this little beauty on here. God, that looks so good with a brand new prop on it, don't it? Oh my goodness. The other thing you want to do is spin this around. And I'm watching the center here. And if you see that center doing like this when you're spinning it around, that means that whammo that the prop took bent the shaft. The nice thing about aluminum props is they will take the abuse and save your gearbox. If that would have taken that big a hit on a stainless prop, good chance it would have taken out the gearbox. Now I do like to run stainless props just for the simple reason. I don't have a lot of debris. Where I fish, there's not a lot of hard debris that I'm running into, rocks and stumps and stuff. But there is mud if you get in some shallow areas and the stainless will just sit there and churn through the mud and not do any damage. Where the aluminum will take, a little, take on a little more damage from that type of debris. All right, we got a little fiber spacer we'll stick back on there. I'm gonna, this is an older key or a cotter pin. I'm gonna take a few more with me because when I go to the lake to try different props out, I'll be bending this back and forth and a good chance I'll totally uh, ruin it. There we go, we just bring that up snug to the next hole and we'll slip that through. We'll bend that a little bit so that don't fall out. That's done. Easy peasy, right? Let's flip it down and go to the top end. All right, I went in, I went and looked up the spark plug. This is a spark plug that was in this particular outboard. And this is the one that's supposed to be in it. Pretty big difference. This is what they call a permagap spark plug. Uh, you see these on a lot of two strokes, which are actually kind of nice because it can fire all the way around 360. Whereas this one's designed just to fire from here to the little bent over piece of metal on the end. I'm not even going to try to call it by the right name because I'll get it wrong. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put this style spark plug in it. And uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, let's go ahead and stick these new Permagap spark plugs in. Next thing I want to do is rebuild this carburetor. Now the carburetor is going to be difficult to get off unless I remove the starter, then it becomes quite easy. So I'm going to get you in here and we'll see what it's going to take to get this starter off.
Now, as you can see, the starter actually came out relatively easy. Basically, this piece here that was the starter solenoid that was in here, you just kind of wiggled it, worked it out. It's mounted in rubber, so I wiggled it out of the way so I could gain access to this one bolt that's down here. And you take this one ground screw loose here, these two slotted screws out here, and that takes care of everything from this side. On the front side of the starter, there's a bolt, there's a stud right here that this slides on. Now, if you're in saltwater conditions, I'm guessing that's going to be a bear because that could corrode on there very, very easily. But then you're able to wiggle the starter enough to get it out from behind here and pull it out in one piece like that. Now we've gained access to the carburetor, which is what I'm after because we're going to re build it. What's funny is I ran through, ran a magnet down through here because I dropped a washer and I found another one of these. It looks like there was a, at some point in time, somebody had lost that and had to put another one on there. Now I have a spare, unless I lose one. But now we've gained access, we should be able to get this carburetor off of here. I'm going to leave this part of the assembly to, together as much as possible. I don't see any reason to take it completely apart. I will pop this arm out of here but looks like everything else is accessible. Now there's a hose that comes into the bottom of the carburetor. It comes right up through a groove and everything. I'm putting new hoses on it anyway, so this is gonna work out just fine. Oh, fuel line, so dry it up, it won't even, it's no longer even limber. But the carburetor is now off. Fuel line out of here. Crowd a bunch of stuff underneath this little hood. Alrighty, we got the carburetor off here. Let's go ahead and pull it apart. And I'm glad I went ahead and took this apart because this gasket's pretty brittle. Yeah, that's just cracking when you bend it. So none of that's really new. Um, that's why when I pulled that one jet out of here, that it was uh, it was all cracked. There's not a lot to these. Everything else looks pretty clean. I'm going to go ahead and blow air through all these passages to make sure they're cleared. There's always a jet in the bowl you want to check out that's underneath this screw to make sure it's not plugged. See that perfectly round hole down in there? That's what you should see. If you don't see a perfectly round hole in there, then that means that jet's plugged with debris. And you wanna make sure that's clean. This one's actually really, really clean. Once all your parts are cleaned, it's time to open up the new carb kit. And uh, basically it doesn't have much in it, but we'll put some new stuff in it. Gotta clean off a little bit of gasket here on this face. But other than that, he's ready to go back on no motion. All right, that face is clean. New gasket's in the bowl. Every, all the ports and everything look really clean. All the jets were open. Uh, 
no reason why this shouldn't work. Now, if you guys wonder what happens when you push this choke down, normally it pushes that shut. But also, as you can see here, I'm trying to get in the shot here. It also takes the throttle and opens that throttle up just a little bit. That's what happens when you choke it. Let's go put this thing back on the machine. All right, we got one black rubber hose here that I want to exchange or get off of here because it is old. It's as old as the motor itself because it's got the same original paint on it. Well, as bad luck would have it, I don't have this small of a hose on hand. I'm going to pick up some tomorrow. Let's go ahead and install this fuel pump. We've got the proper gasket on it now and the right length screws, screws so it should seal around this port where it needs to. All right, we're stopping at a good spot here. I've got to wait to get this new line that I can run from here back to here. I think it's eighth inch. It looks like it's really tiny. It's at least eighth inch is all. Um, I'm not sure why they have two different nipples on each end. Uh, maybe the, I mean, the original hose must just stretch over it. So, I mean, this stuff is usually pretty pliable and is capable of doing that. But to, to catch you up to what I did so far is we ran a new fuel line for the inlet all the way to the fuel pump. And we ran from the fuel pump to the carburetor here with brand new 5 16 fuel line. We're going to get the new line on here and then we'll be ready to throw the carburetor back on. And as soon as the carburetor's back on, we'll be back in business. Now, one of the things I want to do while we're waiting to do that, this thing turns really stiff right here. This shift handle is crazy stiff. So if you guys ever have one that's stiff like that, usually what happens is grease in here gets really old. There's a Phillips screw right here. We'll take that Phillips screw loose. There's spring loaded in here typically. That's what holds everything in place. See that spring loaded there? Just take a mental note of where that's facing and how things look when you pull it apart. Yeah, see there's some super duper gummed up grease here. See, I can turn that by hand. This thing here was like stiff, stiff. And then it's gonna hurt to throw a little lube down in that shaft there as well but this is it's you can see the grease that's on here is like any that's on here is just i mean that's some sticky like tar so we'll soak that and clean that up i want you guys to take a look at that handle you saw it when i took it in i'll do a quick before and after with it on here but man that come out just so clean now i'm gonna tell you how i did it i took some of my um super clean put it in a container and just let this soak in it. Then I went after it with a little toothbrush, rinsed it out. That got all the old stale grease out and now she's just as beautiful as can be. The next thing I did was took some bleach and I set this in a container of bleach like this and then I set it in here like this and look at that. Took all the stains out. This thing's gonna look like a brand new handle. It's not gonna fit the rest of it, but I'm okay with that. That's clean and nice. So let's go ahead and put it back together so I can see where that's going to go down in that groove is where that needs to go. Then I'll push this down until the screw goes in. Wow, that's night and day difference there. That is... Uh, that moves so freely now. But not too freely. It's got that spring tension on it. Look how white that handle looks now. <laughs> that turned out spectacular. All right, well that's done. All righty, we got the little black hose that I was that I showed you earlier that was painted. I got that replaced. Uh, we're ready to set the carburetor back on here, and I might have to cut this uh, fuel line to length. Basically, once I get the carburetor back on and I get the starter back in, we'll be firing this bad boy up. Let's see here if that's gonna, gonna test fit some things here. All 
All right, we got the carburetor back in place. Let's get this uh, starter back in now. We'll be getting closer to being done. Another thing that was going to give somebody some problems here is this bolt was tight here, and this one was loose. Uh, you can see it's just finger loose. I was noticing I could wiggle the starter. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but we'll have to, hopefully that tightens down and that's not a stripped out bolt situation. Well, that's good. It wasn't stripped out. It was just loose. Backed off about two to three turns. the carb. <laughs> so much air it's just sucking air up.
got a tough to run her, boys. <laughs>
all because it has one bolt in the wrong spot. Why doesn't it say running? Why doesn't it say running? It barely kicks over and dies. It's like, ha! Ah. Well, you pressurize it, and it turns out that fuel and dies. And it ain't pumping. Yeah. Yeah. There you have it, folks. That bad boy runs, runs like a dog on top. You know what's next, don't you? That's right, it's going on the back of the banana, and we're gonna get this bad boy out in the water. Stay tuned for that video coming up real soon. I'm not gonna make you wait a lot of days between this video and that out on the water video because I'm as excited to see this thing run as you are. It's about 90 something degrees outside right now, and I'm sure the lake's gonna be full of people, and uh, we got kind of a late start today, but because I didn't work on this all week like I should have. But uh, yeah, she pops right off. You saw the first start pop off run. Uh, electric start works, pull start works. Everything's pumping fuel like it should, sparking like it should, revving like it should. The true test will be, will it pull it on the water? Now you guys know I got this 15 pitch prop on here right now and we're going to, I've got a 15 pitch and a 13 pitch and I'm gonna see if on one of these other outboards if I got 11 pitch. But that's gonna be in an upcoming video as well. Uh, with it running out on the water is we'll have uh, we're gonna do a little test between uh, the same boat same motor same everything and just go with two to three different prop sizes Just to see what the different performance levels are. We'll record the top speed. I won't be recording RPMs I'll just be listening for the motor whether it's revving up higher or lower. I'm not gonna get crazy technical here folks But anyway, thanks for watching Tune in for the next video on this is gonna be on the water whether it lives or dies It'll be in the video this is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. I'm out. Damn, 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 dam